welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're highlighting the work of Ionic. It's a company dedicated to the earlier diagnosis of cancer. And with me is its CEO, Jared Bauer. Jared, hello. Hello, Vivian. It's good to be with you. Now, often in these open house sessions, we talk about the use of novel technology. But what Ionic is all about is a new way to use a kind of old technology, which is bioimpedance, the kind of thing people are familiar with when they jump on your uh, on their scales at home and your scales shout back at you in a really unhelpful way what your body fat composition is. Same technology, it's been around since the 18th century, but you at Ionic are using it in a very different way. So tell us a bit more about how it works in cancer. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question and a, a great lead in. It is an old technology, but we are using it differently. Uh, typically, bioimpedance is used with alternating current, AC. We use bioimpedance with direct current, DC. That change is pretty substantial in that we are able to use the technology to diagnose cancer in its earliest stages by looking not for the cancer itself, but by detecting electrically the body's reaction to the presence of cancer. And then presumably, if a test comes back positive, then further investigations can take place. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So for example, in lung cancer, you'll utilize imaging as the initial screen. That will tell you whether or not something is present. Then you can use the ionic prolung device which is our brand for our lung cancer detection system. And ultimately with that device, you'll be able to determine in real time whether or not those nodules that have been found are malignant or benign. So that, that ultimately is about a 20 minute test. Over that 20 minutes, we actually take 15,000 data points and we run that through our proprietary algorithm and that is what gives the results so all of that happens digitally it does require an operator to utilize it um, and again that's in reference to our lung test but we also have a breast cancer test that's in the works and uh, gi cancer re gi related uh, tests that are in the works as well so do you have to have a skilled operator to do this and someone to interpret it so the device itself, the way our technology works is we do the interpretation for you. Ultimately, you know, there, there absolutely is a labor shortage. We need to come up with solutions for the marketplace or for the industry that are going to speed things and, and limit the impact or the amount of labor that's required. And, and admittedly, in our technology, we've done just that. So there's an operator, if you can imagine just a general technician, they're going to have roughly a week's worth of training by us at some point, and then they're ready to go. And they're then able to run this test. And so what happens during that period of time is, is the operator sits you down, they take your shirt off, they touch this, this probe that we've shown previously to the various points on your body, then everything else happens on the computer side. Now, what makes your... I, mean, I think you've already started to explain uh, why it's uh, different from uh, other cancer detection platforms and why it has su such um, significant advantages. Absolutely. So if you think about cancer detection, just kind of at a high level, there's really two main types of detection. On one hand, you have imaging. On the other hand, you have biopsy, either tissue or blood biopsy now with the work that Grail and Thrive and others have done. All of those require that the cancer reaches a certain point in its own cycle in order to be able to be seen. So if we think about that in terms of imaging, the cancer itself has to grow large enough to be visible. If you think about that in terms of blood biopsy, you have to slough off enough that we can pull that, pick that signal up in your bloodstream or find that in your bloodstream. And if you think about tissue biopsy, I have to know where to go, what I'm looking for in order to do the tissue biopsy. By not looking for the cancer di directly, but instead looking for the body's reaction, which is very unique to the presence of cancer, we're actually able to detect in the very earliest stages. So if you think about stage one lung cancer, now lung cancer is the number one killer in all cancers, almost as much as the next three cancers combined, um, just simply because it is so difficult to detect and it's hard to justify biopsy. 
because of the risks associated with it. And by biopsy in that case, I'm referring to tissue biopsy specifically. But because of that difficulty, we lose a, a substantial number of patients because we're detecting this ultimately in stage three, stage four. We, at, at, in our lung cancer trials, we're detecting at an 85% sensitivity, 74% specificity in stage one and stage two for lung cancer. So that reaction, small, your body recognizes that the cancer is growing. The body has this oversized reaction to try and stop this. We detect that reaction and subsequently, Vivian, very early stage detection. It's really powerful. And uh, and easy without use of non -ion, uh, with uh, uh, ionizing radiation as well. Yeah, we we say no radiation, no needles, no surgery, uh, and that's kind of our our little tagline. Ultimately, this looks, feels, acts like an EKG. So if anybody, you know, everyone's familiar, I think, with EKG, those electrodes that go on your body, we utilize those same electrodes, and then we also have a probe. This is our probe. This probe actually we push into the skin in various places on the body, and it's that combination that gives us that electrical signal that we then analyze those 15,000 data points. Okay, let's move now to the company itself. So uh, you joined in, I think, in 2018 as CEO. Uh, what have been the key business changes since you joined? Science, science, uh, more science, and a shift to commercialization. So when I came into the company in 2018, the company had actually had quite the history of doing clinical trials, but internally they didn't have a scientific team with enough depth to actually determine what was happening. So we had the data and we could see, the company could see that they were able to detect cancer in its early stages, but didn't necessarily have a full understanding why, how that was working or how they could build off of that. At the time they had specifically a lung cancer test that had finished um, just shy of, I think five full clinical trials at that point. We've done two additional since then over the course of about 10 years. And so when I came in in 18, we built out the scientific team further. We expanded our investigation into the technology itself. Really, I mean, and, and it's one of those situations, Vivian, where you have to have enough data in order to dissect and truly understand what's happening. You, you visually can see this phenomenon, but the understanding of that phenomenon is what's required for you to make improvements and for you to expand the technology. And so that's ultimately the shift that occurred. So from 18, from 2018 till now, what you see in our, in our corporate history is a shift back to the science, a build out of the scientific team, many modifications to the device itself, um, a push towards pushing this through the FDA and ultimately commercialization. In fact, our lung cancer test received a breakthrough designation from the FDA. We'll be submitting to the FDA our full de novo application shortly. But then you also see this expansion in, uh, into other cancers, breast cancer, where we started feasibility work in uh, late 2019 and into feasibility trials in 20, and now into our next phase of those trials here next month. Uh, you also see an expansion of the work that we're doing in what we refer to internally as all GI related cancers. Basically, we want to detect cancer from your neck to your waist non-invasively non -invasively in, in 20 minutes. Um, through the use of a, our technology, but used as a multi-cancer screen. So that is that ultimately a change in the vision of the company moving forward as well. All of that, though, comes back to science, regulatory, reimbursement, and commercialization, and just a change of the company strategy to focus tightly in on those areas. Which leads me to ask you if you'd update us on your recent um, regulatory and uh, research milestones? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great question. So we will submit our de novo application for our breakthrough lung cancer test. Our, the, the, uh, the test has a breakthrough designation and we'll be submitting that. Um, I have some science around the office. If I look around, I think it's 15 days from now, something somewhere around there. So that is um, forthcoming. And then past that, um, and we anticipate, you know, it's a de novo, so there's a six-month review and then a six-month corrective action period. 
Past that, um, we will begin full trials of our breast cancer test later this year. We're anticipating into the fourth quarter on that. Uh, we also have now our CE mark for our lung cancer test as well, and we'll look to expand the label on that. And this early detection, uh, it doesn't mean that people will get overdiagnosed. In other words, that your system will detect that there is a cancer there, but then it's very difficult to find because it's such a small um, uh, size. Yeah, that's a, uh, another great question. So the reality of the situation is we know that if we detect earlier, we can save upwards of 90 percent. American Cancer Society has been pretty clear on that, and most experts agree. That is our corporate goal. Uh, now, having said that, there is concern, as you just laid out, in the overdetection. And, and I would just say this, I would say, you know, one of the interesting things about existing technologies, especially as we look at imaging, imaging is fantastic at seeing what's there, but its false positive rate is incredibly high because although we can see what's there, we can't necessarily determine what it is. If anything, we believe that we actually start to solve for that because we can determine what that is. So maybe great, you can see it, but existing technology, you still are having to go in, you're doing biopsy. And so we don't add any additional risk. If anything, we lower the risk factor of overdiagnosis because when we're right, we're right. Our positive predictive value in our latest trial is performing above 90%. And that is substantial in terms of just when we say there's cancer, there is in fact cancer. And frankly, that's what we need to know more than there's something there and we don't know what it is. It's a very exciting vision for the future. And uh, I uh, very much hope that it succeeds, particularly your all cancer development, which, which does sound um, fascinating. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, Vivian. I sure appreciate the time.